Howdy everyone, this is Home DIY Dan. I redid our garage floors using this Armor Garage two-part epoxy system. It's 100% solid. Paid about $700 for it. The reviews online were great, which is one of the reasons why I went with it. Also upgraded, got the military top coat and it looks fantastic. So I'm gonna walk you guys through what I did and hopefully I, you, know, you guys can learn something from uh, some of the things that I did and some of the lessons I learned and mistakes I made. Enjoy. Okay, so concrete prep is key. This is my third acid wash. I'm going through and rinsing, putting water down on the concrete. Then I'm gonna go through and just pour the acid directly on. Um, I tried two other methods. It worked all right, so I talked to a pool contractor who used muriatic acid to clean concrete on pools. They said they poured it right on the concrete after they wet it down. So I thought I'd give it a try. It worked about the same as everything else. Um, definitely got to make sure that everything's prepped and get uh, cleaned real well. Went through and rinsed off everything. Oh, one thing you want to remember is to make sure you wet down everything that's around the area as you're rinsing it off so that it doesn't hurt anything as with the acid washing out. Gotta have a beer break. So then I just went through, continued pressure washing, making sure to get everything out, all the uh, film that was left over from the acid, just make sure it's nice and clean. All right, so I've got everything laid out that I'm gonna need. I've got my part A, part B, my containers for mixing smaller batches, because I'm gonna be doing a couple smaller batches just to get started so that I can get used to it and you know make sure everything's going well. Uh, a 12 inch notch squeegee, two nine inch rollers. One of them's for the epoxy. The second one will be for the clear coat. Got my mixer, paint chips, uh, drill three eighth inch holes in the bottom of this container so that I can shake out the paint chips as I go. See how that works out. I saw it online. It seemed like it would uh, help with an even distribution of them. So we'll give that a whirl. And yeah, got everything here. Just gotta do a few more things and then we'll be ready to start mixing. So you're gonna wanna mix up the part A, mix it for about 30 seconds. Make sure there's no color streaks in there. You got a nice uniform color going through the whole bucket, mix up the resin, just give it another 30 seconds, mixing it up, making sure everything's good. You got nothing suspended in there. Um, so one thing, you know, make sure you do that floor's gotta be completely dry before you start putting stuff down. Otherwise you're gonna have issues down the road. It's not gonna bond properly and you wanna make sure you go through right beforehand sweep it out or take a shot back to it and just make sure it's nice and clean. So I'm mixing up my first batch here, I'm doing just uh, two quarts of the part A, the color. I'm gonna do one quart of the resin to get a nice two to one mix. I marked off on the containers where exactly two quarts was and where one quart was. They had it marked on the container but I just put tape around and make sure I could see it from all angles so I wouldn't over pour or under pour. This mixing is the second most important thing outside of prepping the floor. So you want to make sure you got that perfect two to one ratio otherwise you're going to have issues with it being too sticky or not adhering properly, not curing properly. So this is this is your second most important step. Then when you're pouring it into the big container, always put part A in first. Um, otherwise you're gonna have just more of an issue mixing as you're trying to get that sticky resin off the bottom of the container if you put it in first. So once you got them in there, you're gonna mix them about three minutes. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with three minutes of mixing, but just make sure you're hitting the bottom, hitting the sides and getting everything mixed up real well. So here we go with the first pour, pouring it out. <clears throat> I definitely went a little too light in that first area. Um, I tried to do multiple areas in one pour, made a mistake doing that. Um, didn't get as much epoxy in the first area that I wanted. And then with the notch squeegee, it wasn't spreading as well as I 
had seen in other videos and had imagined um, because of the notches it wasn't grabbing all the epoxy that's on the floor it did spread it nicely but just combination of lack of enough epoxy being poured out and then the notch squeegee made it a little more difficult spread it out as well as I could and then I went through and cut in all the edges make sure everything was good and cut in along along there and then I went back with the roller and spread it out in a crosshatch pattern that really helped going through spreading it out this way um, it did spread real well with the roller definitely would recommend pouring in smaller areas than the way I did it but it turned out well lessons learned first time doing this so so here you see just going north and south with it and then come back and here you go east and west you know whichever direction you do probably doesn't really matter it ended up i couldn't i can't see any brush marks or roller marks in the epoxy it's nice and it levels itself out so got nice and spread out and it's looking great so just going back rolling the opposite direction just making sure everything's nice and spread out evenly um, getting rid of any areas that were raised or roller marks just doing a very light very light um roll not pressing down hard or anything like that and then you kind of want to feather it as you're lifting up the roller so that you don't leave that that last roller impression in the epoxy Coming back, cutting in the corners, making sure that that little lips covered. I do wish I would have gone through on the lip there and uh, covered it with more patchwork. There were some holes there that I didn't consider because it was on the lip. So when you're doing your patching on the floor, just take that into account. I used the Rust-Oleum concrete patch, worked really well, sanded down really nice, um, easy to mix, another two to one kind of thing. Just mix it on a, I mix it on a piece of cardboard with a putty knife and then spread it out real, real nice. And then the uh, bucket here with the flakes, drilled three eighth inch holes in the bottom. That worked out beautifully, I, I can't imagine trying to throw these out of a box or out of a bag you know this just shake it and you got a very nice even distribution made it real easy to do the flakes so at this point i i figured i was going to do smaller batches when i went into this and as i got going i was like well Let's just mix up the rest and see how this goes. Hindsight's 2020. I wish I would have continued with the smaller batch plan. Um, just made it a little more difficult to get it all spread out, especially since this kit, it, it says it covers 550 square feet. I've got a 520 square foot garage. I ended up with just enough. And then with that notch squeegee, like I said, it didn't spread out as well as I was hoping. So as I'm pouring it out here, you can see the pour only gets me about halfway through the garage. So now I've got to spread it from the back corner all the way across, which made it difficult. Not gonna lie, as I was getting about halfway through I didn't know if I'd have enough epoxy and panic had started to set in. Um, 
the roller really came in helpful with spreading it because the uh, that notch squeegee just wasn't doing it. I could see why they uh, they sent it. If I had had a smaller garage, probably would have been great to use. But just I, I think a flat, just a flat edge squeegee would have definitely helped more. Could have spread it a lot easier. So now I'm just trying to spread it out as much as I can to get it as far into the garage as I possibly can without having to take the roller. So picked up the roller and ended up just spreading it all out that way. Doing areas, you know, dragging as much with the roller that I possibly could. Definitely make sure you get some spike shoes. I picked mine up 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, the company Armor Garage has a pair for like 50 on the website that you can buy when you purchase the kit. These ones worked out great. I'm so glad I bought them because otherwise I would have been in a lot of trouble trying to do this. Even when you're just trying to go back and touch up some of the flakes or anything, you know, you, you want these just so you can move around on the floor as you're doing it. Um, definitely made it easy. Camera cut out near the end, so putting down the flakes now. And here's the final product. It's looking amazing. Ready for the clear coat. I gave it about eight to 10 hours to uh, get the, let the epoxy cure before I started putting down the clear coat. So I started this in the afternoon, about 11 and it was about nine o'clock at night when I started putting down the clear, the top coat. It was just put it in a uh, roller tray and roll it on. Um, there were a few spots that I noticed at the end after the clear, clear coat had cured that probably weren't as dry to the touch as they should have been. They were more in the middle when I went through and touched it all, I was uh, touching the edges and there was a few spots where I didn't, didn't touch. So just another, you know, make sure every area of the floor is dry. Turned out fantastic. Here's the final product. I love it.